Hello, my name is Steve Faulkner. This is Real Magic Review, and this is Ultimate Self-Working Card Tricks, the Ryan Matney edition by Big Blind Media. So before we start this review, can you like, subscribe, check out cardmagiccourse.com, that'd be lovely. I should have my new sales page up by now, which has more information on it. So have a look at that, cardmagiccourse.com. Loads and loads and loads of stuff on there and new stuff going on every couple of weeks at the moment. So first of all, I hope you're well. I hope everybody's staying safe. The, at time of recording, this is around about the 4th of April. So we're all locked down. So I do really hope everybody's well. I mean that sincerely. And thank you for all the support of this channel. It's made a huge difference to me. Um, this Ultimate Self-Working Card Tricks, Ryan Matney edition. Now, I didn't know much about Ryan Matney. I've had a look at his stuff, and he's actually released a book relatively recently uh, called Spoiler Alert with Kaufman and Greenberg, which looks really interesting, actually. Interesting for me because I've never really looked at self-working card tricks. Not because I'm against them. I just never thought they fitted into what I did as a profession. And in the last couple of years I've got back into magic as a hobby and now I'm seeing them in slightly different light because of stuff like this and uh, Owen from Big Blind Media sent me the last Ultimate Self-Working Card Tricks which was number four and I, I watched it I was going to review it I watched it and then I had loads of stuff on came back to review it and I'd forgotten all the tricks not because they were bad just because that's what happens right you watch 10 tricks then you come back to them weeks later and you go oh, I can't really talk about them until I watch it again and so I was I was glad when when I received this and I watched it last night and it's still super fresh the first thing is to say is big blind media so Liam Montier is very good and Montier 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 I have to check that out let me know uh, if you watch this Liam he's very good he's very crisp <laughs> that doesn't really describe anyone does it he doesn't look like a crisp he's, he's just kind of good at it's it's kind of a clean presentation that's kind of what, what it's now faff you know he presents it really nicely really smoothly um and it's kind of what you want when you want to learn this sort of trick there's quite a lot of process involved in this um and actually when i say crisp i'm probably thinking about the presentation of big blind media because it is really nice isn't it they put a lot of work into making it look good and they they all look similar they're all in in the studio and i don't think that's a bad thing for certain things i would maybe like to see a little bit more audience stuff but that's it by the by really so there is 12 tricks there are 12 tricks on this dvd i'm not going to go through every one of them but i don't know maybe i will the, the starts off with this paul bearer's aces i'll go for the ones i could that spring to mind that probably says something the paul bearer's aces starts off with um it's the spectator shuffles a pack and you can she'll deal down a few and come to the first ace but beforehand you will tell her or him what ace will come next and the final one is in your pocket which is really really nice there's a lot of by play there's a lot of uh, tricks in this which have subtleties that make them a lot more convincing so make sure you do watch you know the details in this because in that trick especially if you just look at what it does you kind of go yeah it's convincing but the card in the pocket only works because of what you do on the way to getting there, if you see what I mean. So those that's kind of what this DVD has for me. Then you have this uh, Maven Bannon four-sided triangle idea, which is a really nice visual way of kind of getting to a, a revelation of a four of a kind, where the spectator can do all the dealing. I mean, you'll probably do a bit of it to, to save time, but it looks really fair, it looks really random, and that's what a lot of these things do isn't it they they create this random mess and then at the end you, there's this kicker and it reminded me this did and a few of the other dvds on the uh f few of the other tricks on the dvd of when i saw danny de ortiz fool the hell out of everybody he had matt king next to him he had all these people he he a couple of years ago at the session just floored everybody and and then it was kind of like a self-working trick and everybody was just like i can't believe it because of the presentation and that's that's a really important thing with these kind of tricks then you've got this oh, um positive fortune observation positive fortune observation which is a, for me one of the strongest tricks on the the dvd it does require some setup you almost have to create your own gaff deck not create with arts and crafts just get certain cards but the payoff really unexpected it starts off talking about um a, a tarot read card reading with tarot that usual thing and i go okay well it's just gonna be a card reading thing and then the ending is super you've got like a turned over 
four of a kind thing, the lucky sevens, there's a message on one of the cards that's turned over, but then the rest of the cards are all uh, one certain card. But the, it kind of fits in with the with the theme of, of the tarot a lot more than I thought it was going to. It was, it was a, re a really good, strong trick. I, I, will, I will actually run through the, through the tricks. I might as well. They're all, I'm going to read them because I can't remember like 12 tricks in a row because I'm 46. Uh, Amara Rises again. This is um, interesting. It's like a mystery card thing. And it's got this, this petal. I think this is one with a petal force. And that's what you'll, you'll learn lots of different concepts to take into other things. Uh, with this DVD, but this Petal Force was something that originally I looked at and went, I don't really like that, and then I saw the potential, and it kind of fooled me, I didn't know how it works, and Liam said, says on it, and a few times he kind of says, it kind of fools, you fool yourself, so the spectator isn't going to know how it's done, and that's actually a really good point, it doesn't necessarily mean it's entertaining, but it's a good starting point, isn't it, where you don't even know how it works, so one of the things you can relax with is that it will definitely fool the spectator. Harmony and Discard Day, and they were probably my least favourite of the presentations, but then when I looked at the method, which is, again, a big learning for me, if, you don't, if you're not that into, there's always a couple of tricks on DVDs I'm not that into, and then you watch the method, you can actually say, actually, I could take that into another plot and use the method, and the method in both of these are really good. The, the discard, the synchronicity thing was a bit, um, the Harmony thing, sorry, was like just a bit contrived for me. It used a post-it note, so it's quite nice and visual, but I thought it was a bit too processy. And the dating thing I really liked, actually, of putting the kings and queens together. Uh, but again, I just thought the, the presentations, this love me, love me not thing, was, wouldn't really suit me. But again, very easy to adapt and create your own thing. Uh, synchronicity theorem. I think that's the one where, you, yeah, really nice. You, um, get, you say at the beginning... Uh, do you know in most a lot of card games they disregard two cards at the beginning of the game? We're going to do that. We'll, we'll choose what cards they are, and then you use a, a really popular kind of self-working force, but in a really nice way where the spectator looks like she does he or he does everything with this force, and then you end up with with two jokers at the end, which I, I thought was really nice. It actually fooled me, even though I could see one of the forces. I didn't know how the other bit was done. So again, for a spectator, it's going to be strong stuff. Uh, Long way home with a version of free will, and I've got to say, I keep saying this. Mark Chandel gave me a book, gave me a book Free Will to, um, to review, and I haven't done it yet. I'm so sorry, Mark, but every time I mention Free Will, I bring it out. So hopefully by the end of it, if I say it's a really good book, and it is really good, I've kind of read a lot of it, uh, that's kind of working as a review, so it makes me feel less guilty. But a really nice version of Free Will where you actually unfold the card box at the end. And if you don't know the Free Will plot, um, have a look at it, Google it. But it's, you un unfold the card box in the end and you know where the three cards are and who's got each card, chosen each card. Really, really nice. Really like it. And it's a really unusual way of doing it. Dual Construct. Um, the, you, it's a really nice use of a cross-cut force. I think I can say that, can't I? Um, but used in a really different way. And I really like this. It's, it's kind of a... It's got out and it's, you create a card. You say you're going you're to find two different cards and we're going to create a card with those cards. So it's a little bit like with someone I don't, I'm not usually that keen on, which is just, if, you know, one card is an ace and the other one is a, a spade and that means the ace of spades. But it's done in a way that seems very fair uh, and is genuinely confusing in a good way. Uh, vintage mob scene where you get four, four people. That's, this reminded me of the Danny Ortiz thing as well, where you get uh, three or four people and one of them... Uh, deals out and shuffles and cuts and deals out and shuffles and cuts and deals out and shuffles and cuts and goes through this whole process and then you've got each person has got an ace which is a really nice thing. Positively Fourth Street which is a story and Liam says he's at Vegas on his birthday and he had a lucky card that meant he won loads of money so, and he's got the card he puts it face down on the back of it it's actually a casino card and he's written the date and the time he, ran the, he, he won the money so it gives it a nice presentation and it's similar to the first trick the Paul Bearer's Ace is actually where there's a riffle shuffle um, and the spectator does the riffle shuffle, the same as this Paul Bearer's Ace, which I think is slightly problematic, but that's the only, they're the only two where that is required. Um, and then deals down after the riffle shuffle and the ace matches the ace on the, on the So it's kind of like a mystery card prediction effect with, a, with another presentation. And the psychic dyslexia approximation was brilliant because I watched it and thought, I don't really like that. And then I saw the end of it and went, oh yeah, I do really like that. And then completely fooled myself by doing it. It uses... The Amalo um, automatic placement. I think that's what it's called. Amalo automatic placement. Uh, well, I could be wrong. But that was, it, it's brilliant. And it totally fools you. And it fooled the person watching it. 
And those people have just watched like <laughs> 25 self-working card tricks. I'm sure they've watched more as well. Uh, and good on them because they're still going, wow, and, and all that. But there's, there's a genuine response with that. And I really, really liked it. Um, revelation of thought of a card that you'll generally don't know until the end of the trick. It will fool everybody, probably even you, as you perform it. I know you don't, I, I haven't just read everything, by the way. That's the only bit I've read. I'm just going to read everything out. But that kind of, it, I thought it was really nice. So have a play with that. It, I couldn't believe it worked. So how did that work? So brilliant. So I did go for every trick, but maybe that's good. If you like self-working card tricks, this is great. I didn't like self-working card tricks. Because they didn't, I was comparing them to non-self-working card tricks. And I think that's what we have to do in order to see them for what they are. They're not supposed to be the same as you sign a card that ends up in my pocket. That's kind of like how the hell. This is still how the hell, but there's a process to get there. And I think these are nice processes and nice presentations and really special things to do with people, you know, when you're sitting with someone and at the moment we're missing doing that, you know, after dinner in an informal situation and there's a really nice presentation and you take them through this journey and at the end there's this really nice production of a card or something that makes them go, how the hell from all that did we get there? I think it's great. It's a different thing and I think we've got to treat it differently. No, it's not going to, you know, completely fry people in the way some things will but it is gonna make them go how the hell do you do that and I really enjoyed that and that was a really unique experience and I think we have to start thinking about 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 that in here there are there are ideas from Marlowe from John Bannon from Max Maven from Ryan Schlutz from Ben O you know all these people understand the fact that yes sleight of hand is brilliant but there is some there's, a, there's something nice and valuable in this and as a hobbyist now I really enjoy it. I was playing with, and I've put on the course, John Bannon's Origami Poker. And you look at that, and you, when you look at it, you kind of go, well, why would you deal that out and do that and do that? But if you know that for what it is, and you're genuine and authentic about that, it doesn't matter. You're not, you're not making it as if it's something else. It's a thing, that, and you're acknowledging the fact. You know, you can do it with presentation. You can do use the process for what it's for, give you space to perform. And that's what I like about this kind of thing. It's, it's, the things they're not self-working because if you just go through the motion they are going to be boring they give you a chance to work on the important thing and the important thing is how we present ourselves and, and if if you can use this for that the, the use the process for for telling a story or telling a story about yourself or giving it meaning and proper meaning i think it's it's really valuable and this you know it, there's people on my card course that have never performed and obviously they're very nervous about performing and if you go out with having to do a flawless double lift or something like that, there's so much to be nervous about. And I think these are brilliant for people who maybe don't want to do sleight of hand or maybe can't do sleight of hand for various reasons or it's just not their thing or they're nervous about it. You just take this stuff out. You'll still fool people. You'll give them a really magical experience and you, you can work on that and build up your confidence before, before or if you ever want to do the sleight of hand stuff. And if you don't, I think it's fine. I don't think this is worse than sleight of hand magic. I think it's just a very different genre of magic and we've got to treat it as such. And I'm really, really enjoying playing with it. The main thing I think you'll get out of this DVD is some ideas for some great presentations, but you'll get these concepts. There are, you know, like I said, the petal force, the, the I'm not going to go through them all actually, but the, the I came out with like four or five ideas I'd never seen that I thought I could use that in so many different ways and, you know, in a really hands-off way. So I think you'll get concepts, you'll get ideas, you'll get building blocks to make your own routines and you will get some very strong self-working routines. Do I still prefer sleight of hand magic? Yes. Am I going to take these into my professional repertoire? No. Would I very happily sit there at, after dinner and do a lot of these tricks? Absolutely. I think they're really enjoyable, really fun and uh, I think you'll really enjoy them if you'd like that sort of thing. So... There it is. Um, oh, one other thing I would have liked is a little bit more about Ryan. It, it, he's not on there. Um, Liam does the tricks, doesn't very well, and there's probably a reason for that. But I really liked. Uh, I'd like to have known a little bit about more about about Ryan from from the DVD. Really, it, it's not really. They're obviously his tricks, and that's what is said. But maybe a little bit more would have been nice. Uh, but there you go. So, ultimate self-working card tricks from Big Blind Media. All the links will be down there. Please like, please subscribe. I really enjoyed watching it last night and have a good one. Take care.